Okay, so I'm going to try and show you some cool new stuff in CleanFlight. First off is LED strips. I've got a piece of paper over this, otherwise you get blinded. So I'm just going to leave that like that for now. And secondly, we've got an OLED display, which is just paging through uh, statistics and information from the flight controller. And if you were to arm it, it would show you just the word armed by itself. Uh, when it's armed, it doesn't just update the display because that would interfere with the flight. Uh, so it only updates the display when it's off. So later on, this is going to show us stuff like um, the receiver configuration. Um, it can show GPS statuses and all that kind of stuff. So in terms of wiring, uh, we've got an LED strip hooked up. We've got an OLED display hooked up. We've got an FR Sky receiver hooked up with PPM. We've also got this blue wire connected up to ADC, which is the RSSI output of there. We've got a, a NAS32 over here. This is the uh, regular um, Acro version. And we've also got a GPS hooked up. And there's a beeper on there as well. Now, underneath this, the NAS is not particularly great in terms of like the, the wiring and the pins and so on. But underneath here, you can see that I've got two wires, this green and blue one, hooked up to this blue and yellow pin down here. These are the I2C outputs. And that is basically hooked up along with plus five and ground over to the OLED display, which as you can see has been modified a little bit um, to get this one working. Now there are ones that you can buy which don't require any of this modification. There's links in the documentation. The curious ones, however, do need modification and it's fiddly, so I wouldn't recommend one. But they're all the same. Ideally, if you've got four input pins and they provide the axe signal, then they should work. This one didn't. And it also has a problem where you just get random dots on the display unless you connect that, that resistor and that capacitor. So that is fixed now and works fine. Uh, the LED strip uh, is hooked up uh, just using power, uh, which is 5 volts and ground. And you can see there's a yellow cable here coming from the LED strip, which plugs into, uh, which is RC5. I don't know whether you can quite see that down there, but that's RC5. Um, it does mean that you can't use soft serial when you're using LED strips. Uh, you can also connect up at the same time the sonar on the last two pins as well if you want to do that at the same time. That configuration does work in clean flight. Okay, so back to the LEDs then. What do these do? So this is the default configuration where the first LED is green, then you've got a purple one, another green one, a white one, another green one, a pink one, another green one, a red one, two blue ones, and two orange ones. Now the default layout is such that this is the back right, front right, front left, rear left. And then you've got one for the front, one for the back, one for the right, one for the left. And two for underneath and two for on top. You don't have to use the last four. You can add more LEDs and configure the LEDs to be uh, to have the functions that you want. Uh, you can have support for up to 32 LEDs. And it looks quite impressive when they're all on. So the functions that you get are arm status. So here you can see we've got, um, I'm not sure what's going to work best. We'll try it like that and see what happens. Um, but you've got arm status. So the green ones are indicating that it's not armed. If I was to arm it, Uh, with one of my switches, if I can just set that up for you. Ah, sorry, it went on because the naze is upside down. There we go. Let's try that again. There we go. All right. So when we arm it, all the green ones turn blue. When it's armed or when it's unarmed, toggling your flight mode switches such as Horizon, Mag, head free and turn those off and angle. Um, yeah, that was angle. Uh, they basically will change the colors to indicate the modes that you're in. Um, you've also got a battery warning, which I can, a low battery warning, which I can simulate by lowering the VBAT scale in the GUI. There we go. So here you can see 
some of the LEDs start to flash when the system thinks there's a low battery. So all the ones that are configured to show warnings basically change between their colours and red and off. And I'll put that back up. You can also have those same LEDs display fail-safe condition, which looks slightly different. So I'm going to turn off the receiver. And I think I've got fail-safe configured. If not, I will go into the CLI and enable it. Nope. I don't have that enabled, so I'm going to turn that back on, put the switches back, go into the CLI, feature, fail safe, there we go, save that, All right, and I'm debugging, so I'll click the debug. Go right there we go. So we got those. So right, fail safe. Let's turn it off. There you go. And now you can see the fail safe pattern. So with the fail safe pattern, all the LEDs uh, that are used to indicate the warnings flash between a a light blue and another colour, which is sort of like a a um, lime green colour. Right. So we'll turn the transmitter back on. Fail safety activated. Additionally, you get indicators. So here I'm pressing stick right, stick left, stick forwards, stick backwards. So the idea is that this would, you know, be in the right positions so that when you're flying about, um, if you don't know what the orientation is of your quad, you can basically put the stick in any direction and then you can find the front of it very easily by the flashing lights on it or the direction that you're pressing. So you can fly this at night really easily without losing orientation. Um, I've done it lots of times. It's a lot of fun. You should definitely try it if you've not. So let's have a quick look at a couple of other quads. So I'm just going to unplug all that and turn this off. For, well, I'll leave it on for a second. So we've got a couple of quads over here. So here you can see we've got a, a little carbon um, spider frame, and that's basically got... LEDs which come out of the flight controller in the middle, the wires go into the back, round the back of the motor, along the chassis, round the chassis, all the way around the front, round the side, the wires go back in, come all out here, round the back, and the last one is this one. So the first one is this one, and the last one that goes all the way around is this one. So when you turn that on, it looks a bit like this. And there we go. So that's got a little animation running at the moment. Um, it basically just cycles on the grid position front to back. So again, if I move the sticks on the transmitter, if I orientate that the same way, so rear ones, front ones, right ones, left ones, and I'm going to quickly arm it, although props are on, so don't do this at home, kids. And then you can see the arm status. And I'm just giving it a tiny little bit of input there. That's what that looks like. And now I'll show you the other one. Okay, so this is what the other one looks like. So this has got an LED strip which runs from the back, the LED one, all the way around, and to the back again. So this is basically a really simple wiring system that you can do. So you don't even have to cut the strip and rejoin them like I had to do with this one. So that basically shows you orientation. Let's bring the transmitter over so we can see. So if I move the, let's orientate it, there we go. So if I move forwards, backwards, right and left, you can see the indicators going there. You can see flight modes being activated and so on. And when it's armed, props are going to spin, so I'm going to stand back. There we go. And you can see the indicators as well. And flight modes. And that is basically how that all works. 
we go. So you can configure your quad um, from the CLI. If I'll just show you that in a moment, hold on. Okay, so we're looking at the CLI now. So as you can see here, those are the features that I've got enabled. That's PPM, VBAT, GPS, Failsafe, RSSI, ADC, LED strip, and display. And to configure the LEDs, you can basically type LED and that will show you the LED configurations. Each LED is mapped onto a 16 by 16 grid, which is a zero based index. So the grid position 0, 0 is the first one and 15, 15 is the last one. Um, and the grid works from uh, north, west being 0, 0 and south, east being 15, 15. You don't have to use a 15 by 15 grid. Here you can see I've basically got a 3 by 3 grid, which is the default configuration. So you can see that LED 4 is the fifth one in the chain. So LED 4 here is the fifth one in the chain, and that's got a position of 0, 0. So what it means is the LEDs come out of the flight controller at LED 0, and then the wiring follows this pattern. So it goes one after the other, which corresponds to the lights as they are there. Okay, so we can see here the last four are marked as being up and down and you can see over here the blue and the yellow ones being up and down. And then we can see there's one marked as being north at the front of the quad, here it is. So it's one across by zero down, which is this one. Then there's one at the rear, which is the south facing one, one by two, which is this one that's red. That was LED seven. And then you've got the ones for the corners. The corner ones are marked up with I on the mode for indicating that they do indicators. And they also have A there to show that they also use for arming flags. And the other LEDs are marked up as warning, which is the W and F, which is the uh, flight mode. And you'll notice that the north one is does not have the flight mode on it. Uh, this is because if all of the things change colour all the time um, with warnings, then when a warning is active, it's not very easy to figure out the front of the craft. So you always want something which shows you the front because it's important to know whether when it's uh, facing towards you because obviously the orientation is much more um, is much harder to control when it's facing towards you. So it's um, important to have one that you always know which way around it's facing at any given time. Or at least it is for me, you might be better at flying. So uh, to mark the end of the chain, you basically just specify one as LED 12 is here. Um, basically that just means nothing, but it stops at the first time it finds nothing to process. So here it's basically going to turn all the LEDs on to white initially, and then it's just going to drive the first um, 12 LEDs. You can have the strip cut to length at any length. So here you can see I've got one with exactly 12 LEDs on for testing. You can buy these little things. This is a ring with 24 LEDs. They work great as well. Um, on this quad here, I was using around 28 LEDs on that one. And this one over here has an odd number, 31. It's odd because it has one central LED at the middle here. But at the back of the quad, there's no central LED because that's where the wires terminate and start from. So you can get pretty flexible. You can put them on underneath the arms, on top of the arms, at the front, at the side, wherever you like, basically, and you can configure them as you see fit. So you can do quite a lot of cool stuff with those. And as I say, that all works with the display. And you've also got, you know, the usual VBAT monitoring and so on. Um, I guess there's not much else to say about the wiring. No, I've been over that. So this is just, um, there's no motors connected to this one at the moment. So I'm using the um, the five volt and ground pins to supply voltage to the um, the peripherals that I've got hooked up on here, but normally you'd use your BEC outputs for it. With the LEDs, they can consume a bit of power when you're using them. So on this little quad over here, I've actually got half of the LEDs being powered by one ESC, which is this one, and the other ESC is this one here, and that powers the other half. 
So you feed five volts into it at the back here and another five volts is fed in over here. The ground is continuous and goes all the way around. The data is also continuous and goes all the way around. So the, the five volts from this ESC ends here and then the new ESC, ESC takes over this one. So basically you're splitting the load of the five volts over the two ESCs so it doesn't um, wear one unfairly and the load is spread out more, which is a bit better. Uh, yeah, that's about all there is to it. So happy tinkering.